Hi, I'm John Green. Welcome to my salon. This is Mental Floss Video, and did you know that having an older sibling of the opposite sex might make heterosexual people better at dating? According to one study from the University of Texas at Arlington, which paired up male and female students for conversations, those with older siblings of the opposite sex were more comfortable in the conversation. And the men who had older sisters were actually rated as more likable by the women. And that's the first of many facts about family I'm going to share with you in this video today. <laughs> Let's continue with a few more facts about older siblings. There's some evidence that women who have older sisters might be more competitive than women who don't. This was observed by a Japanese economist who looked at the behavior of high school and college students doing competitive activities. Interestingly, her team also found that men who have older sisters tend to be less competitive than men who don't. Also, where you fall in the birth order may affect who you spend your time with and even marry. According to one 2009 study, firstborns are more likely to be friends with other firstborns. The young Youngest child will associate mostly with younger siblings, and even only children prefer to spend their time with other only children. Older siblings are also most likely to be the tallest of their parents' children, and there's some evidence that their IQs might be a couple points higher on average, too. Now that needs to be studied more, but forget it, I'm just gonna say it's true. Hank, I'm smarter than you, according to science. Not really. But I am. On the other hand, he is taller than I am. That's a bit worrisome. Of course, siblinghood isn't all about difference. A 2001 study, for instance, in addition to other reports, found that teenage moms have an impact on their siblings. Like, there's an increase in the odds that her sister will also have a child during adolescence. Experts estimate this chance is between two and six times higher than the overall population of women. On the other side of the coin, though, there's a psychological phenomenon known as sibling de-identification. This refers to a person who forms their own identity by making it deliberately different from the personality of their sibling. It's most commonly observed in siblings who are similar in age and sex. Not to make this video too much about me, but I can't help but note that my younger sibling is really into science, something that I did not excel at in school. Moving on to grandparents. There was a study on the relationships between grandparents and their grandchildren that lasted from 1985 to 2004, and researchers found that people who reported feeling emotionally close to their grandparents were less likely to experience the symptoms of depression. And the same phenomenon was actually also observed in the grandparents. As of 2011, one in ten American children lived with a grandparent, and that number has been fairly stable since the recession in 2007. Seventy-one percent of these 7.7 .7 million children are living in the grandparent's house. Multi-generational households are definitely making a comeback in the U.S. In 1940, about 25 percent of American households contained at least two adult generations. By 1980, that number had dropped to 12 percent, but in 2008, it was back up to 16.1 percent. Another big change in American families their size. Nowadays, a woman has on average 1.9 children. That's way down from the 3.7 children in 1960. 1.9, huh? I've always considered Hank to be the 0.9 to my 1. In 1990, a psychologist at McGill University followed up with a group of adults who'd been part of a study at Yale University when they were just five-year-olds. There was data on how the teachers and mothers described those children's family lives. And the researchers found that the best way to predict how empathetic an adult would be was actually the amount of time they got to spend with their father at a young age. According to the lead researcher, we were amazed to find how affectionate parents were with their children made no difference in empathy, and we were astounded at how strong the father's influence was after 25 years. There's another thing that might encourage dads to spend more time with their kids. One 2010 study found that when fathers played with their babies, they experienced a boost of oxytocin, a hormone often described as the love hormone. Motherhood changes the brain, too a lot, like experts see activity increases in the parts of the brain associated with empathy and anxiety, like the amygdala, and gray matter in the brain gets more concentrated. Studying some of this more might help us to understand postpartum depression and how to treat it. Also, moms affect our brains, like a 2012 study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences contained data from the MRIs of 92 children, and the researchers found that children who had nurturing, supportive mothers had a hippocampus that was around 10% larger than those with less nurturing moms. Another way parents can help their kids suck on their pacifiers. What? No. No, I'm not doing that. I don't even care. I don't care what the rest of the fact is. In 2013, a study published in the journal Pediatrics reported the finding that kids whose pacifiers were cleaned in boiling water had higher rates of eczema, allergies, and asthma than kids whose parents used their own mouths to clean the pacifiers. I love my children so much. 
And yet, not that much. Also, it's worth mentioning that the American Dental Association released a statement saying that this practice might increase the child's chances of tooth decay. So, yeah, at least I've got an excuse now. Remember for like seven minutes when all anyone could talk about was dad bod? What I call my seven minutes of glory? Well, it turns out that there's scientific proof for it. One study from Northwestern University looked at the BMI of over 10,000 fathers for a few years, and during that time, their BMIs increased an average of 2.6% which, if anything, seems low to me. This means that the average six-foot-tall dad would gain around 4.4 pounds. Even dads who lived separately from their new baby gained around 3.3 pounds. Men without kids lost 1.4 pounds during the same period in their lives. While we're busy eating, new moms are becoming exhausted. Dangerously so, in fact. A 2014 study found that new mothers had medically significant sleepiness levels up to 18 weeks after giving birth. According to the lead researcher, this level of tiredness is a risk factor for people performing critical and dangerous tasks, of which motherhood is definitely one. Interestingly, on average, new moms are actually sleeping roughly the same amount as normal, it's just that the sleep is extremely disturbed, so they aren't really benefiting much from it. Mothers with older kids have other stuff to worry about, like a report published in 2013 surveyed a thousand mothers from the UK, and they found that moms get asked approximately 300 questions every single day. Four-year-old girls are the biggest question askers, averaging 390 a day. My two-year-old daughter definitely asks 390 questions a day, but 280 of them are, can we listen to let it go? <sighs> yes. Yes, we can listen to let it go. Again. And again. And again. And it let it go, Alice! There are interesting discrepancies in the memories of mothers who were single when they had a child. One study surveyed around 5,000 moms between the late 90s and early 2000s, and then the researchers spoke with them again a year later. Only two-thirds of the single moms remembered that they were single at the time they gave birth. The other third claimed that they were cohabitating with someone or married at the time. This returns us to a recurring theme of Mental Floss videos, which is how incredibly unreliable human memory is. But moving on, you may know the term helicopter parent, meaning overprotective or over-involved parents. Well, according to a 2010 study from Keene State College, which surveyed around 300 students, the children of these helicopter parents are often more anxious and neurotic themselves. They're also less open to new experiences. Stress gets passed down in other ways, too. Like one study of New York women who were pregnant during the 9-11 attacks found that their babies actually had lower levels of cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone, and low cortisol is one of the factors doctors use to diagnose post-traumatic stress disorder. Boys who experience secure attacks attachment to their parents, meaning they have a consistent and reliable relationship, are less likely to act out. Young boys who have a more insecure attachment tend to be more aggressive and disobedient, and for girls, this often manifests as anxiety rather than physical violence. According to the National Opinion Research Center, getting married boosts Americans' happiness by about 18%. But then, as they start having kids, those kids remove about 1.3% apiece from the likelihood that parents will call themselves very happy. Okay, let's finish up with some more sibling stuff. Younger siblings may be more likely to resist tobacco. In a 2003 study at the University of Oklahoma, researchers surveyed over 9,500 young smokers. They found that kids typically encountered smoking thanks to older siblings, but the younger sibling was more likely to avoid smoking the closer they were in age to their older sibling. You may be familiar with the fact that some siblings fight. It doesn't take particularly deep research to establish that, but one recent study looked at the range of types of sibling relationships, and they found that 85% of them were somewhere between repairable and excellent. Hank and I are somewhere between repairable and excellent. We were excellent, but then when he watches this video, it's probably gonna go down to repairable, but I'll repair it. And finally, I return to my salon to tell you that some experts who study siblings have found that sisters provide emotional security to their siblings. In 1977, one study examined adult siblings and found that men who had sisters were more emotionally secure than those who didn't have them, and women who had sisters were more socially secure. I don't have any sisters, which perhaps explains my insecurity. Anyway, thanks for watching Mental Floss video, which is made with the help of all of these nice people. Let us know in comments below if your experience jimes with these studies or not, and please don't bring up any of these facts at large family functions. As we say in my hometown, don't forget to be awesome.